Hello and welcome everybody to a brand new series on Saving Throw Show called the RPG Exploration Society. Uh, well, the series isn't new, but what's new is us. We are going to be playing some Avatar <laughs> RPG Legends. You can't make me laugh. I'm going to keep this together. Y'all, I am very hyped for this. I am going to be your host and GM. My name is B Zelda. They, them. Um, we're going to do a really quick round robin to introduce these fantastic people, and then we're going to talk about some sponsors and pre-show notes. So, popcorn style, Connie, hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me here, B. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Connie. I'm so excited to be here on Saving Throw Show. This is my first time on this channel, so hello to new people who don't know oh, me. Yeah. Um, outside of this, I am the GM and executive producer for Transplaner RPG, which is an all-transgender, people-of-color-led, 100% homebrew, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition live-streamed actual play campaign set in the original non-colonial anti-orientalist world of Andake. We stream Saturdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Uh, this Saturday, we're streaming our ARC 4 interlude episode. It's the perfect time to hop into Transplaner. Uh, so follow us on Twitter, Twitch at Transplaner RPG, and you can toss me a follow on Twitter and TikTok at by Connie Chong. That's B-Y-C-O-N-N-I-E-C-H-A-N-G, by as in the authorial sign-off, not the sexuality, though I am <laughs> both. Uh, and with that out of the way, I'm going to pass along popcorn style to Drac. I had a feeling it was going to be me. Um, hi, <laughs> I'm Draconix, or Drac for sure. I use he, they pronouns. Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Draconix, that's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. This isn't my first time here. I, I guessed it here on uh, New Pantheons and also hang out, hung out with Dom while playing um, the new Dark Alliance, Dungeon, Dungeon and Dragons Dark Alliance, and that was a ton of fun. Oh, um, cool. But yeah, uh, I'm the co-founder and one of the co-founders of an event organized at Friends Roll Dice. There's another TTFD Twitch um, channel um, and also just kind of appear on a bunch of different channels. So honestly, just follow me and Friends Roll Dice on Twitter to know where I am at any given moment because I'm not entirely sure until like maybe an hour or two prior. <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pop in over to Vanna. Oh, predictable <laughs> as always. <laughs> Um, I'm Vanna. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I stream full time on Twitch, mostly video games, but I do produce tabletop RPGs from time to time. Time to time, and um, <laughs> and uh, I, I produce From Dust Till Dark over there, which is a fifth edition actual play, and uh, pull up a sheet, which is a show that is specifically about introducing new folks to the hobby um, in a safe and comfortable and uh, supportive space. Um, and then, uh, who knows what else? Maybe sexy grad school Strixhaven campaign starring Connie. <laughs> I don't, I don't what? know. Listen, <laughs> Vanna, listen, DM me. <laughs> we gotta be honest. I this is the first time I'm you. hearing of this. You did, you did, you did, actually. You I did. already DM'd wow. you. You forgot. You did, you did. You're right, you're right. It's the ADHD. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is Connie posting about our campaign? It's because I be literally <laughs> forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my sorry i just wanted to call you out really quick um <laughs> that's me i'm excited to be here popcorn michelle hi thank last last popcorn um hi i'm michelle uh rap and you can i'm mostly found on various ttrpg channels uh you can find me usually uh with asians represent uh which is a fantastic a group of folks we talk about asian representation in media and ttrpgs uh you find me on the character we where we read character that old chestnut that's full of really awkward stereotypes and tropes uh where we basically critique it we talk about ways we can make it better um well we also work on uh various ways of various projects of our own um to better enrich this space so um other things that you can find me on include other actual plays uh i work with drake sometimes i sometimes just there people are like oh can you dm this thing i'm like oh yeah sure so <laughs> i end up dming for a lot of weird random stuff um but overall i am also a ttrpg writer um i am mostly known also for magic the gathering shenanigans and you can find me on twitter at kiln fiend potter where you can find pictures of my cats and my pottery multiple cats oh yeah <laughs> you know i'd be living that life <laughs> Heck Do I look yes. like a one cat person to you? Excuse no, me. No. <laughs> None of us are one cat people. 
No, I have, I have zero cats. I'm you so and Rack have zero cats. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I have two dogs. Okay. That kind of them looks that like counts. a bat. So I have three sisters. Is that <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jack, you're dead. Is that what you call your cats? If your sisters are watching, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> I have a sleeve of uh, fresh garlic in my kitchen. <laughs> that counts. That's okay. closer than the three sisters. Okay. Just imagining like a sleeve of fresh garlic just in a litter box. Just <laughs> 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 That's where you imagine day. all cats first. Yep. You just walk in and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> gone. Excuse me. <laughs> it's a real Rocco Elmo situation for oh, sure. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So We're so getting sorry. topical tonight. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What was the other we thing? <laughs> uh, so before we get too, too topical, um, I just want to <laughs> let everybody know that we have some goals for this evening. Uh, we are aiming yeah. to raise $250 an episode. Hitting that goal each, night's, uh, each night allows us to continue to pay our amazing cast and keep content like this on the air. Even if you can't afford to back us, you know, just spread the word, retweet it, quote, retweet it, do whatever you feel feels right. Um, word of mouth works. You can shout it down the hallway to any of your siblings, friends, or families. Uh, and then a tip of only $15 will allow you to send us a message, which we are going to re read live on air. I'm just reading this right now. Good to know. Um, so, uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> make it really good because now I'm really intrigued. I'll read anything, absolutely anything. As long as it won't get us banned, I will read <laughs> Anything. Yeah, slide in that. <laughs> quickly slide in that. Um... Just send us, send us your on the juiciest movie script right now. Send us your juiciest bird facts. We'll read them on air. <laughs> It'll be great. I want better fanfic. Birds with them. Oh my God. What kind of fanfic? Naughty like, fanfic about um, birds. About, about birds. <laughs> yeah, about birds. Yes, and birds. Um, <laughs> yes, and birds. I said I'd read it. Okay, I don't have to be here for it. Uh, Connie, why don't you go next? <laughs> why don't I? Uh, so a huge thank you to Saving Throw Show's season sponsor, Hero Forge, for supporting this channel. You can type exclamation point Hero Forge in chat to check out the wonderful customization tool they've created and get your own personalized miniatures now with full color options today. I personally love Hero Forge. It's a great way for me to try out new OCs. So if you don't have an account already, what are you waiting for? Their modeling is fantastic. And speaking of sponsors, Drac. Yeah, so we're also sponsored by Die Hard Dice. <laughs> uh, for, um, you can save 10% off on any dice, anything you purchase on Die Hard Dice. You're saving throw 22 at checkout. Um, the command is exclamation point DHD in chat for the links and stuff. Um, and now that you mentioned, yeah, it's right here. You can also order uh, our dice, Vanna's dice, um, on Die Hard Dice. Rhyme, um, no rhyme or reason. Um, is that actually wanted... mentioned there? Yeah, it is. Uh, oh. <laughs> you, you can order our friend Vanna's dice set, among others. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Yeah. I thought we already sold all the sets, so I don't I don't know, <laughs> no, I don't just, know if you Just can. go to see if they're still there. Just go out. and see if they're there. We got the full not. payout, so I just assumed they were gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to bounce over to Michelle. Um, yeah, they... Why, thank you, Drac. Come in here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for everyone who's watching us on the VOD on YouTube, thank you so much for um, for watching, for listening. I hope you're having fun doing whatever it is you're doing in the background. Um, so one thing you can do for us uh, would be an enormous solid would be to leave us a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, um, just do the whole nine yards. Any of these things really helps the show and it helps the channel as a whole and also us. We're so pretty. Uh, last but not least, hey, Vanna. Well, thank you, Michelle. I'll take it from here. <laughs> Lastly, support the channel through tips and monthly subscriptions via Ko-fi. Enter exclamation point Ko-fi in the chat to check it out. On Ko-fi, you can tip, can you believe it, as you would regularly, but you can also join the Exploration Society with a monthly amount, like a subscription, you Ooh. know? Ever heard of it? <laughs> no, never. You get the <laughs> same great rewards as Patreon, and you can unlock things like toast. I'm sorry, toasts with your tips. <laughs> Plus, Kofi doesn't take a cut, so nearly 100% of your tip goes straight to the channel. After PayPal, of course, but that's inevitable. <laughs> like, like death. 
<laughs> PayPal. <laughs> it's inevitable. <laughs> so much. Taxes, That's death, taxes. and PayPal. That's, what they say. That's right. That's right. Man. Um, well, to confirm, we're not giving out free toast. Um, <laughs> so sorry. Chat. I have a loaf so of sorry, bread chat. in my fridge, B. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a toaster, toaster oven. <laughs> what? Okay. I am prepared to give away free toast. <laughs> Well then, <laughs> Kat, you heard it here. Free you know toast what? is available. Hannah, I have been baking a lot lately. I'm gonna double whatever toast oh my you God. make. Just I toasting like a piece of bread oh, kind of baking. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I will I will bake and then I'm gonna take up slices of my challah and then I will toast that challah <laughs> and then I will send that double pledge. B, I hope you're Join ready to now. GM this. Just for uh, like several weeks. <laughs> I've decided I energy. <laughs> I've decided my character will be a newscaster, so oh my that's gonna God. be the energy the whole Wait, time. I Is PvP that. allowed? Just <laughs> <laughs> I said no on my sheet. <laughs> what if we're all <laughs> on my lines of mails? <laughs> okay, what if what if we're all newscasters and we're just different like, of rival now stations? We have to come oh, no. live from Ba Sing Se. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there, there is, is no office. war. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of absolutely a hundred percent no war or fire nation occupation <laughs> zero percent <laughs> oh my goodness all right well are we all ready for some avatar legends the role-playing game yes yes yeah. we are <laughs> yes. bring us in Perfect. Use a legal name i see <laughs> <laughs> All right, so at its core, this is an RPG. Um, this is a game that utilizes Powered by the Apocalypse, a 2D6 system, which is lovely, simple. I hope everybody brought their dice. If not, there's digital dice rollers anywhere oh. you look. If you don't have dice already in your pockets, I'm disappointed. I'm so sorry. I always Too carry ready. pocket Michelle? dice. How do you not carry on pocket dice? I'm, I'm sorry. I... You've been ejected from... You've been voted off the island. <laughs> this is what I wanted. I wanted <laughs> this. You played no, right into fired? my trap. Because I quit. I can, okay. I can you have plenty of time to look for dice. Yeah, you're, okay. you're golden. Uh, so Avatar Legends, the RPG, is a heroic fantasy game set in the world of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, in which you play a hero from one of the four nations who is a force of change in the world. This is a game about bravery, friendship, and doing what is right in the face of often insurmountable odds. This is a game where you will play young heroes who join together to fight for what's right in a complicated and nuanced world. Together with your companions, you'll face devious foes and dangerous oppositions. Defeat them as a team and learn what it means to be a hero in the process. Um, Y'all, this is not uh, just a kid's game. Just uh, There's often like the strange misconception that because Avatar was uh, on Nickelodeon and it was for kids and I might have watched it with my little brother. Um, <laughs> this is a game for anybody um okay shout out to my little brother he makes all of my DD characters for anything i've ever played so oh, yeah yeah i remember nice. they made one of your characters that we played in a one shot yes <laughs> yeah. he's still doing that for me and it's great <laughs> i don't i don't do character creation very well so i'm super excited about trying to do this all <laughs> with y'all right episode is all about that that's good <laughs> that's actually good because um we didn't we didn't tell you about this b um, we're bringing on your brother. Come on. Oh, <laughs> no! oh, <laughs> Welcome. He's going to make all of our characters. It's going to be great. Oh, perfect. Hell yeah. I'll be min maxed and super, super strong. Okay, wait, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just want to play for fun. Yeah, I want to be uh, overpowered. I get that. Yeah, Dice delivery. I, Dice. Oh, <laughs> success. Good job, y'all. Um, so it's worth notice, uh, noting that the world of Avatar Legends is a fantasy adventure setting inspired by Asian and North American indigenous cultures, a land filled with breathtaking temples, majestic sky bison, and unique marvels of technology. But it's also a world defined by struggle. There are no true villains or heroes, just people with complex motivations that come into conflict with others to forge a future they believe is best. Um, I'm not really going to describe the premise of avatar uh we have four nations the fire nation the water nation the earth kingdom and the air nomads um and 
this game, we have the option to play through certain eras. Um, we have Kiyoshi's era, which, Vanna, can you just tell me about why, wh what what do you love about it so much? Because I have not dipped my toes in that era at Gay. all. Gay. <laughs> oh. oh, that's beautiful. Gay and sad. <laughs> I love that. I love she that Kiyoshi works. made gay people. <laughs> I love that that was her crowning achievement. <laughs> That's really yeah. good. Kiyoshi, Kiyoshi, so I should create her so, own island. They <laughs> made it for they made gay people in real life after how successful the Kiyoshi era was. That's right. I believe that. Yeah. That's, that's really real they're facts. like, oh, you know what? I think Avatar Kiyoshi is on to something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should be queer. I don't know. <laughs> much, much that more of that. Greatest legacy is the Avatar. <laughs> Spreading queerness. That's canon. But yeah, it's a yeah. much more, uh, I would say, like, mature storyline where it's just, mm -hmm. like, I feel like the the um, things that we see in the TV show are, like, struggles that you would have when you were younger, despite, you know, like, in-game kind of stuff. Uh, but everything that Kiyoshi faces is, like, very real. Like, um, it's, an, it's a lot of it is stuff that can happen in real life. And get it, 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 this uh, supplement for this book actually talks about it a lot. It's, like, how there's no true villains you know, and all the heroes are are absolutely imperfect. And that's mm -hmm. it, that is just like it's fraught with that kind of stuff. And I absolutely love that. I Oh, gosh, I'm such a sucker for that. Because that's really what the real world is all about. Them. They're very oh, good. OK, I might I might start now. Um, well, we've also got Roku's era. Um, this covers the time just before the arrival of Sozin's Comet and the beginning of the Hundred Year War. It's a cool era. I don't know. Does anybody have any nice things to say about this era? I mean, I think it's really interesting because you start to see the, uh, particularly if anyone out there remembers Avatar Roku, um, he spent a lot of his time basically trying to squish out um, the the underlying political tensions that would have eventually led to the Hundred Years War. Um, mm. I forgot and so about that, that. And like he, that one of the things that he did was basically he faced off against one of his childhood friends, um, who would eventually become the first Fire Lord to actually begin an imperialist um colonialist rule and mandate uh throughout the various nations and so um basically being that's a very interesting sort of time period because we're starting to see that that kind of sort of a little bit like fascist uh feudal kind of situation colonial mm -hmm. stuff like start bubble, bubbling up and uh trying to push back on that as um we know bad times are ahead is always fun i love this this is what tells me i have a really good cast y'all it's gonna be good <laughs> Um, then we have my personal favorite, um, the Hundred Year uh, War Era, because, um, I don't know, this is just like, it's summarized quite literally by, if you want to rebel against unjust rule, protect the weak and stand up to tyranny. Um, and if I can summarize my experience in tabletop RPGs, it's that. Um, so that really speaks to me. And then like the way it was depicted in the show, I thought that it just creates so many moments for that kind of power and i really really love that there was so much unrest and this is when the world was really crumbling and i i love chaos <laughs> it brings me joy uh <laughs> we have ang's era and for those who are familiar with the series they would know this uh and then cora's era so like we have a lot of options in this game um a lot of different places where you can play nothing has to be you have a... yeah we'll just leave it with you have a lot of options all right, so starting to get to play. Um, getting ready to play makes making decisions about the game as a group and making decisions about the characters you want to play individually. Um, we all get to decide what our game's scope, uh, group focus, and inciting incident are going to be. Um, so choosing a scope. Um, step one, the game's scope defines how much of the Four Nations you expect to explore over the course of the game. Um, we're probably going to choose a narrow scope because we have uh, a very specific amount of play. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of examples as well. So like scope, Ba Sing Se. Um, ba Sing Se tends to offer a really wide scope because we've got the entirety of the city. Um, we can do a scope of everywhere in the world. So step one, let me, let's rewind. Hundred Year War. That's, that's our setting. We're all cool with that. Yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. All right, Fire Nation. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, in the P or in the uh, character keeper that I've shared with my players, um, 
On the bottom tabs, there is something called campaign, and that's mostly where I'm going to be working in right now. Ooh, okay. Yes, yeah. So what kind of a scope are we looking for? Do we want to something rather specific in uh, a specific area? Um, oh my God, my cat's face. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I literally, I have his face on my t-shirt right now. Oh my God. <laughs> I literally have a t-shirt with my cat's face on it. My partner's dad got it for us for Christmas. Anyway, Amazing. please don't let him Goodness. interrupt. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> you love him. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from. I just love you. <laughs> just know, I love your cat. He's very cute. Um, yeah, so something narrow or I guess like narrow, medium, or broad. Um, yeah. I'll probably just speak for all of us in this respect for like a nice narrow scope. Yeah. Yeah, that yes. works. Yeah, I'd love that. All right, group focus. So our group focus is the purpose which brought uh, your characters together to achieve a common goal. Your characters might disagree about how to achieve it, but they all agree that the goal is something important that's worth risking danger and changing their futures. We're going to choose one of the following verbs uh, as your group focus and then determine the object of that verb's actions. So, um, yeah, regardless of where you look, um, if... Anybody at home is following along with the quick start. Um, you can get this on Magpie's website. I think all you have to do is like enter your email and then we'll email it to you. Yeah. Um, it's on page eight of our little PDF. Um, otherwise, for my folks in the document, uh, our options are to defeat a villain, to protect place idea culture person, to change culture society place person, to deliver person thing to place person to rescue and to learn. Do any of these stand out to you? Is anybody passionate about any of them? I always really resonate with to defeat or to rescue because those feel really active to me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I I think that our, I have, I don't know, I just have a gut feeling our characters are going to be really chaotic uh, and into doing <laughs> things. So I want to lean into a weird that. feeling. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's going to be just a bunch of really serious conflicts. We're just, just going to learn. Conflict. We're just going to sit here and learn. That's what we're going to yeah. do. Learn stuff. <laughs> just for um, us studying in the library. Let's go. I, I also like, um, I love these two. I also like deliver thing to place. Um, always fun to do like a bit of a quest in that regard. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I definitely love the idea of like rescuing or I, I really love the narratives of people who are um, like the, the, the small, the small folk who are basically like, oh, we don't feature in the bigger, like we're not going to be in the history books, but without our work and our help, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Right. You know, you save yeah. a generation mm -hmm. of children and other people just because you stood up to mm -hmm. you stood up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. Yeah. And so deliver is fun, but I, I'm down with either rescue or defeat. I'm I'm leaning towards rescue, I think. I kind of like the idea um, of having to rescue someone. Um, or like recover rescue, a thing. Yeah, or recover a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Vanna? I'm down with that. I rolled a d6, so I want to go with <laughs> <laughs> what people actually want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you're fantastic. All right. I feel like rescue feels very good. Yeah. Right, let me open a random word generator. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I do everything. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're amazing. Okay. I personally think it would be a lot of fun if we were trying to rescue a person, perhaps a person that maybe all four of us are connected to in some way. I think so too. That I'm would a be big a lot of fun. fan of that. It's our dad. Our oh work God. God. We all have <laughs> different moms. Oh. I'm so I'm we're your we're his bastard children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm into this. Do we like meet for the first time and we don't know Ooh. that we're, we're half siblings? Oh my God. <laughs> what if he was like a wandering, like traveler like a bar. and like oh. seduced like people? <laughs> and well, and I'm it's thinking is like... since it's the Hundred Years' War that he's part of the Fire Nation army. So he's slowly mm -hmm. going across the continent over the course of well, whatever what if he's chunk like of hundred years. He's a freaking GI. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand that reference. 
<laughs> no, it's just no. it's it's an imperialist a GI like, Joe. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. I I I kind of feel like it'd be nice to do something like I, I maybe we're from like a small village or like a neighborhood, like we're from like a rough neighborhood or something. And maybe this is the person who has been taking care of us or is a key part of our community in some way. And they've been taken up by the Fire Nation Army or whatever um, because they are a key figure. Maybe they know things. And so we're just like, we're going to okay. get them back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm really interested in playing someone from the Fire Nation uh, yeah. slash like someone who has like You could be their one legitimate child. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the we're saving our baby daddy. <laughs> so we're back on the baby daddy. I'm going to just keep pushing that. Y'all keep spitballing and then, and then I will come back with that <laughs> every time. <laughs> I love Michelle's like noble intentions, but I, I like <laughs> my brain wants to align with Michelle's very noble intentions, but my heart is like, we're skeevy, we're sleazy, and our dad's a piece of crap. We got our save dad's him. a slut. <laughs> <laughs> we have a slut. We have a slutty dad. <laughs> slutty, we all slutty get dad. To figure out, um, we all get to figure out the pilot episode. So we're okay. not going to role play the pilot episode we're gonna figure that out right now and if that involves sleazy dad doing his biz um <laughs> we don't need to see that we don't no need... but that's oh, yeah. out of the background um we'll figure out kind of what was the moment oh, that brought you all God, together so, so we're gonna good. take off from that kind of point yeah um i, okay. I have that gave me okay so yeah, yeah i i enjoy anime and this one anime one infamous anime i'll say i don't know famous infamous depending on who you ask um called jojo's bizarre adventures yeah and, oh boy, and, here we go <laughs> and one of the seasons literally starts with this the legitimate son of a man shows up to the um shows up to their half brother like they haven't talked to like ever and was like okay. hey your dad is my dad he left your mom yeah really weird messed up thing here's the shit has happened and i think it'd be very interesting for like their legitimate um son to come and like bring all of us together and do uh, the inside that could inside. be interesting okay. what if our dad mm. is kind of a piece of crap but he he's really like wealthy maybe our our, our other parents were really in love with them and like yeah we we've got to save him because he's the one, fire lord <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> we're rescuing or are we defeating yeah, yeah, what's we happening then? are we the so bad we guys go we go we go I'm compelled <laughs> then I'm compelled <laughs> like, gotta pitch it to us we go we to rescue him. him we go to rescue him and then we get there and, and go hey pops slut dad why are you sitting on that throne <laughs> and he goes uh, I'm the fire lord and we go oh my god <laughs> then we defeat him Okay, so are you, are you pre planning the twist? <laughs> You're right. Wait, we're pre planning the twist for ourselves. Idea. I have a better idea. I have a better idea. Okay, wait. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Our father is the is Fire Lord's body double, and he has been kidnapped <laughs> because somebody thought that he was the real Fire Lord. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> why? That's my whole idea. Why are the kids, and why can't like the secret guards of the Fire Nation save him? Like, what? What is your motivation? Because the it's... the Fire Lord wants to the, his enemies to think he's been stolen. <laughs> so act I... one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. You can work with it. Can um, we? I'm going yeah, to mute my mic. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, because we, again, we're, dis we're detailing what has happened in episode one, and we're going to pick up on episode two. So a lot yeah. of this, what we're doing right now is going to kind of set like the who, what, where, why, when, and how. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple of, if this helps get us, um, again, in this um, document that I'm sharing with y'all, um, if you scroll down, um, we have outlining your inciting incident. Um, and it gives us some options. Like we befriended an ally who gave us access to a valuable item. We discovered a secret hidden by a powerful figure. So we could have discovered that our, that your father was in fact the body double of the fire lord, which I feel like you... <laughs> Maybe Kanye would have known, but like uh, I feel like we mm. would have all known, right? Like, I feel like hey, we all would have known. Why do you, why do you, you look, look just like, like that guy? <laughs> no, all the we money. don't because he's 
master of disguise, and that's why he can have so many lives is because he's he takes on a different personality everywhere he goes. <laughs> <laughs> it makes for a cool backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just like I I feel like I'm in a roller coaster. I have no control over this ride. I'm just being taken along, and I'm like, you gotta go with it, Michelle. <laughs> you gotta go with it. This is a lot of colors. <laughs> Vanna is the coaster. We're sitting on I, Vanna's back. Thank I God. love Vanna, but I'm going to be the one to fight Vanna back on <laughs> on any okay. anything just to be um, the contraire. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to begin to the end. I do love the idea of us all being siblings of some yeah, kind. I, really I definitely love, love that. I do love that. The second thing I do love is like we have to find the man who like went around and i guess are, are we like part of a polycule like what, are we the product of a polycule like is that something I, that we can i'd be really interested in like n not in like okay. us not yeah. meeting until the inciting incident brings gotcha. us together somehow so um so maybe like we so there's this guy he's just wandering Maybe he's like a very famous musician. Like maybe he's kind of like I a bard. I would prefer of some that. Kind. I love a good bard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he's just a very famous musician, entertainer. Like, and he's just been spreading, sowing his wild oats everywhere. And now he has been taken. And we just found out that maybe we are his progeny. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, but he's like in jail and we'll never. And so maybe we each have our own reasons for wanting to pursue to him. I mean, I think it yeah. makes a lot of sense if we all have very personal reasons for wanting to find yeah. our missing dad. I just got yeah. an idea for why our dad could be important because it's happening in wartime. Like, what if yeah. he, like, has he's been he's a bard right and maybe either he's i have two ideas one is that he's an insurrectionist so in his songs he's trying to yeah. incite like rebellion against the fire nation from within the nation and they're taking him as a political yeah. prisoner because he's sort of like i don't know like lady gaga but they can't just like assassinate <laughs> lady gaga in the open they have to like disappear lady gaga right yeah that's yeah, my yeah, first yeah. idea my lady second gaga, idea okay <laughs> <laughs> it's just lady gaga if you're watching we love you i yeah, said you. too much i've said okay. too much <laughs> can't put his um, camera cut the resemblance is uncanny in uncanny. the shallows the nose. <laughs> I've, I've never heard that song i'm just basing it off of the Nailed title it. um Nailed it. that's my that's my first idea my second okay. idea for why he could be important is he has some he's obtained some sort of knowledge of like a secret firebending art or something uh Ooh. because he's a traveling martial bard dude he like he stumbled upon something he wasn't supposed to see uh regarding the fire nation's plans or something and he's being disappeared because of that those are my, those are my he tricks. knows how I to like boil people's brains inside their skulls oh, oh my, my god, god. <laughs> Vanna, you're just coming out of the field every time swinging every just, time. You're i haven't been on a tabletop rpg show in like two months and i'm freaking out <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry great. I'm doing this to all of you. I'm so I like sorry. that. I I'm love glad it. that we're the ones that I actually love that. that. I love that. I, like I figured out the secret technique. I love, or uh, I love both of them. It could be both. I mean, why not both? Yeah, can both why not both? Maybe, maybe he's like, he is famous for two reasons. He's famous because he makes like, he's like a punk kind of dude and he's like mm -hmm. going around and like none of our, none of our other parents are like, like resentful about it i but you know we all have our own reasons for pursuing him and maybe he also has this amazing like maybe he's a firebender himself and like maybe he just has amazing flute riffs that just like he can flute firebend like he can just shoot fire <laughs> out of his flute or something God. that's really, really cool. cool or what if like his way of firebending is kind of like breath bending and he does a flute thing and it's what vanna says if he vibrates the yeah. molecules at the <gasps> right level it can what if, it can like vibrate your brain what but if, he has sworn off the technique and the yes. fire nation has captured him because they want him to teach their soldiers how to do it but he's sworn <laughs> off it because he's a pacifist he's, now but well, he used okay. to be a soldier but now he's I a bard but what if <laughs> he's a what if from he's, the army? What if he's like Kenny G though? Like he's like the Kenny G of this world. He's just going around playing soothing, like anti-war music. It's like soothing. I he's like wanting that. to spread like peace. And very Bob then, like, Dylan. Very Bob Dylan. Very like Kenny G, but more like Kenny G because of the woodwind rather than like a. And big that would guitar. explain his free love. Yeah, his free love, and he's just yes, he's a hippie. 
Yes. He's a hippie. Our That's dad is a huge yeah. hippie. Please make our dad a huge stoner. Um, <laughs> Done. But also yeah. really cool and like a dark also, past. He's like killed people before. I yeah. mean, he has boiled their brains in their skulls. Yes. So he well, swore not yeah, never okay. again. He swore he well. swore never to. It but like happen. all of our other parents are just really like, you know, they, they they there's like no bitterness about that exchange. Like we get to have a kid. You know, I it's almost, cool. I almost what if all of our parents um could not have a child of their own for whatever reason and he was the sperm donor but we all want to know our biological father i, I think we can all have different reasons yeah. like one of us yeah. can be a sperm donor yeah. one of us mm -hmm. could have like a sperm like he left the other parent and the parents bitter one of them could have parted on good terms right another one could be like some sort of weird artificial insemination jane the virgin situation you know like you never know uh <laughs> so i don't know that reference <laughs> It's very I'm just like, but how would you like water bend in it? Like, oh so my god! Actually, oh my god! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Actually, yes. Sperm bender. Sperm, Sperm bender. Oh. bender. Wait, that could that's what? definitely a whole job like profession. Yeah, that has to be. that's just how like, they do very livestock. accurately. Yeah, yeah. No, it and is. I brought this up, is. but I'm 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 putting a I'm sh putting a pin in this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I I love that we've created our father. In my head, he's he looks like an Asian. <laughs> he looks like an Asian Kenny G, but like stoned out, like Bob Dylan kind of thing with a or Willie Nelson. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like kind of a grungy Kenny G. <laughs> I'm so down for that. I love love it. Yeah. I'm obsessed with him. I I kind of want all of us to have like amicable reasons why he left because maybe we it would just yeah. be nice if we all loved our dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want one of you, I want one of you to hate father. Him. I'll hate him. I'll gladly. Thank hate you. Him. I want okay. one angry kid. Okay. I'll, yeah. an angry I'll be the angry kid. But maybe are, is your anger justified? Like you're maybe like you is your mom about... like it, or, how, or your parent is just like I? fine? How old and, are and you're just really angry. <laughs> well, how old are our characters? I guess it would depend there as well. If I'm age enough to like mellow out and understand, like if I'm like an adult, then probably not. But if I'm like a teen. Yeah, I'm an angry teen. But... <laughs> 14 to 17 is our range, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll be angry then. Excuse mm -hmm. me. All the feelings. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was me. Okay, yeah. so act one. What happened to your father? So we'll call it like, the disappearance of the father. Is that he disappeared after... Yeah, he was on Leaving tour. you all letter to like come together so you can like find oh meet me at you. my at my next festival <laughs> yeah he was playing like the of like of a tour and maybe he was going to some outdoor like festival thing like coachella <laughs> yeah i really want all of you to meet and inside each envelope was a golden ticket <laughs> <laughs> i've no. hidden five golden tickets i sent to all of my children <laughs> all over the world he actually has like a hundred kids, but only five of them got tickets. <laughs> that is <laughs> fucking awful. Stop. Uh, <laughs> so now think... I'm on the coaster with Vanna now. I'm just like, this is great. <laughs> We're like, I, I think, I think, like, if if he disappeared, I think, I honestly think, like, someone he was in his, he was in the life of consistently reached out to us i think his, we because if they left us we won't notice that he disappeared he left us i'm guessing like years his ago. roadie his roadie let us know his roadie who carries all his stuff <laughs> let okay. us let us know i'm not against this okay so i think his roadie had a letter for you because I, I want like the father to be able to impart some words that will mean something specific yeah. to each of you kids Mm -hmm. um please so... let me be like super weirdly poetic and cryptic very oh, yeah. emotional <laughs> he carries high. it with him everywhere but he left it behind so i know something bad has happened <laughs> okay so he asked his roadie what's his roadie name give me a, a name for a roadie his uncle's or his roadie's name? name is just name uncle <laughs> okay uncle <laughs> i think maybe like uncle fang or like uncle, uncle... yeah uncle fang or like uncle it's uncle fang yeah like whose uncle is he no nobody's he's everybody's. everyone's uncle he's i mean nobody's and everyone's that was like seemed too weird because like they at least for me anyway anyone that's a friend of my parent i call them auntie or uncle mm -hmm. <laughs> like was it was yeah. nice, please i guess that would it makes sense that's fair that's fair okay so this is discovery of his death um you all discover his death <laughs> 
He's dead? Oh no, sorry. Why am I saying this? I'm reading and talking. Um <laughs> we got roller coaster camera. Yeah, yeah. Real quick halt. <laughs> <laughs> you killed my dad already? A dead man. <laughs> Quest over. He was dead. But he the discovered whole time. his disappearance. He's, mm-hmm. he's been dead for 25 years. <laughs> He's wearing Wait, the I'm red 17. tie. That's what does that mean? He never left you. Oh my god. You know what that means. Your dad is a ghost. No. <laughs> and he was Act when you two. were accepted. Act two. Um, so you have this information. You've been gathered by Uncle Fang. What do you do? Do you head out? Do you discover something terrible? This is all one episode, don't forget. Okay, oh, okay. Um, I think we just so is this like... before we've met oh, up? Go ahead. I think or... this, you know what? Maybe this is the meeting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that would the, make sense. the terrible truth we mm-hmm. discover is that all of us exist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we all think yeah. we're the only kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we all think we're the only child of this. Yes, yes. Very Perfect. charismatic, very horny man. <laughs> <laughs> he's not horny, he's full of love. Oh, God. Yeah, he wants to share it. Yeah. Yeah. We can have our own opinions about our dad. Yeah, yep. I have no idea what my character We're going to fight about it. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm interested in that. <laughs> Act three. So, do you, I need a moment where you all do something incredible together. Or something mm. terrible happens. I don't know. Episode oh, two, know. start from the hit cliffhanger oh, of episode one. I have one. an idea. Um, <laughs> since, like, if a roadie knew that we were related to this guy who's now mm-hmm. a political prisoner surely the fire nation would know and we'll probably have yes! a card on our backs as well like he could they for they know they'd be like if he doesn't talk maybe they know this technique or whoa, maybe whoa, whoa. he taught them this technique i also i also have a hand raised but maybe <laughs> go first Call, okay, okay. Yeah. oh you got called on connie you go okay yeah, great. thank you yeah, i want to go first anyway huh. uh, so <laughs> what if what if Uncle Fang actually brought us in so the Fire Nation could just kill us all when we're in the same room? And he, Uncle Fang's like a traitor. But like the cliffhanger is we, against all odds, we banded together and we fought him off. We like fought off the Fire Nation people who came in and ambushed us at the meeting place. And we also either like, Uncle Fang either got away or we tied him up and interrogated him or he died. I don't know how dark we're going to oh, get. No, no. Um, I feel like that's my idea. What's no, his motive? Like, so his motive is like, so he's the betrayer. He's the inside guy for the Fire Nation. He yes. got, he got, um, so he got uh, paid off by the Fire Nation to follow him around for a while. Like he's, so he's been with our father for years, but recently yes. he doesn't he, have to be the wolf. real Uncle Fang either because the kids don't be, know the real Uncle Fang. Yeah, yeah maybe he's true. not the real Uncle Fang. <gasps> be what the oh. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they say like lying, the best lies are told with the truth. So like the first bit of information we get is true like yes. he has been taken he's gone you need to help me find him what's going mm-hmm. on and then i don't know a big net drops or something <laughs> <We're just> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes exactly i exactly really love I connie's mean. idea i really love connie's okay idea. i love connie's idea but i still want to share mine <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. i want to do connie's <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was thinking the only way we could, the Fire Nation shows up to uh, take us in, and the only way that we can avoid detection is by pretending we're a band at the festival, and we have to form <laughs> a family band and perform until oh they my leave. God. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, I love both. Is there a way for both to work? Yes. Um, is there a way? So if, can... it's, it's like a Scooby Doo scenario, both can happen because it's like we're trying to get away from Uncle Fang and. In that mess, we get thrust on a stage, and the mic does that weird oh buzzy thing, gosh. right? And it goes, <laughs> and we're like, and and one of us oh. is like, we gotta play. We it's go, like that scene play. from it's like that scene from Coco with with um, Miguel's grandma there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah La, 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 when she sings La Llorona, it's so good. Really and she has like to it. fight Ernesto the whole time, oh, and it's God. great. <laughs> I love that. I I really like that actually. That yeah, <laughs> we should we should do the fight on stage, like at this. Yeah, and every the audience thinks over. it's a part of the performance. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and all these bending are like pyrotechnics to them because everybody's fucking stoned. I'm into <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I claim bass. I'm the bassist. <laughs> I would like I would like my character to be this like the the singer who like who this guy can't sing. There's no way he can sing and he just goes up to the mic and just like, bellows like fucking um Michael Bublé or something. We're this is a punk act. You don't need to sing. Yeah. Um I want to be the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Done. 
Does that make me the lead guitarist? Yes! I, so. yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel yes. like that's very you, and you should totally Shredding. go for that. I'm Shredding with my like... teeth like Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just holding down the bass. We actually boil the entire audience's brains because we don't know the way the world Santa's like, no, let's commit mass murder. <laughs> Accidental. Mass uh, manslaughter. Um, no. That was just an idea. Okay, thank you. There's never, there's no such thing as a bad idea. Except, Except for that, that one. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have a setting, we have a scenario, <laughs> we have a mission. Um, so episode one, uh, how many? Four children with the same father receive a letter from a strange man named Uncle Fang. In that letter, you learn about the disappearance of your, oh, that doesn't make any sense. In that letter, you learn that your father has been a busy man. He is a well-known musician, inciting insurrection, fighting against the Fire Nation well on Fire Nation turf. He is an infamous flutist and possesses a- Flautist. Flautist. Thank you. How dare you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just, think of, just think of that delicious. Just think of a delicious flauta. Mm, yes, mm. flauta. He is an infamous flautist. <laughs> who possesses He's an infamous flauta? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he is. <laughs> He's got a powerful technique, and like flash, like the scene changes to just like uh, a bunch of flames, and then you hear like the cooking of like on a frying pan. It sounds like some sizzling. Mm. You don't actually see anything, and then it zooms out to his face, and it says he can boil the brains of people with their brains still in their head. <laughs> it sounds like a t-shirt like horror story on Reddit. <laughs> he played the flute, but their brains boiled in their heads. <laughs> I'm, am I the asshole? <laughs> 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 what about your brain? Am I the asshole? <laughs> <laughs> they came into my house. Like, I have the right to boil their brain. Uh -huh, right? It's my technique. Clearly. <laughs> the scene changes. The meeting. All the kids are gathered by Uncle Fang. Um... Oh, we'll pick a city in the Fire Nation. I'm trying to remember what was the capital. Where um, is it? Just called the capital. It's just called the capital. I think Ugh, I like, we can go look at yeah, a thing. festival called the Burning Man because I think that just perfect. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. The Burning Done. Man. Yes, Done. it's not Burning Man. It's the Burning Man. The right. Burning. Yeah. Easily easily. Easily. <laughs> they burn a man every year. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a long <laughs> situation. <laughs> Shirley Jackson, <laughs> like it goes in like a big like ball and they turn it and they pick someone's name. Oh no! <laughs> Nick Cage shows up. Nick... <laughs> uh, no, I, I, no. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> there is you have a toast. Oh um, yeah, we do. So at this fire, at this fire burning man, where no men are actually burned, the thought of men are burned, and that's okay. Um, somebody gets on stage and from Diana Moon, they start to sing, toss a coin to your bender. Oh, 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 no. oh, nation of fire. Oh, nation of fire. Oh, wait, toss a coin to your bender. Coin to your bender. Friend of cabbage man. man. <laughs> my cabbage juice. <laughs> <laughs> my cabbage juice. That's beautiful. Thank you. I don't have a um, drink. I should get one. And then the scene resumes back to the kids, and a net has fallen down on them after they've just been like reunited, united for the very first time, learning that you're all siblings with the same father. You have no time to get to know each other because that net net has captured you and kind of drags you a little bit. Um, using your powers, you are all able to escape from that, and then there is a mad dash to the only place that seems open, the middle of the stage. On stage, there are a variety of instruments which you kids just pick up and immediately start playing like professionals. The Fire Nation guards who came with Uncle Fang start to attack you, but you all maneuver and dance around their moves like some kind of elaborate dance, escaping their clutches and putting on the best performance at Burning Man. 
The Burning Man. The, the Burning, Burning Man. Man. Legally yeah. distinct. <laughs> Legally distinct. <laughs> Legally distinct. <laughs> That's actually a killer pilot. Like I can right? see the final fight, and we're all like, nah, 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 and, like flipping around with like. It's like, it's like, what's in your back? I took the base with me. I don't know. It's in <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. I panicked. I took it with me. The base is forgivable, but that's an entire drum set. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Just making the okay. most noise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what drums sound like. We'll never lose that. If you're saying your drum goes choo, yes, it's it goes It's, it's, it's a punch. Fire Nation drum. It sounds different. Mm-hmm. 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 Very yes. specific mm-hmm. to that area, of course. <laughs> I drop the triangle, and it's melodious. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's how all triangles are described. All right, so it's time to make some. Heckin' characters, y'all. Yes! Yes! Yes. All right. Let's read some words. Character creation. Uh, Step one, as with most PBTA games, we are going to pick some playbooks. Now, the playbooks have a beautiful sentence that summarizes basically what they're all about. In this quick start, we get to choose from six distinct playbooks. We have the bold. The bold fights to live up to their self-image and earns others' trust and confidence. Play the bold if you want to build your reputation and leadership skills. The guardian. They defend someone close to them, steadfast and watchful. Play the guardian if you want to be the first to see danger coming in the last line of defense. The hammer. They are strong, tough, and looking for a deserving face to punch. Play the hammer if you want to grapple with what force can and can't solve. Oh, that's funny. The icon comes from an ancient tradition and inherited some serious standards to live up to. Play the icon if you want to be torn between your heart and your destiny. The idealist has a past full of suffering and tragedy that has strengthened, strengthened, strengthened their beliefs. Play the idealist if you want to awaken the hope around everyone. <clears throat> And then finally, the successor. They come from a lineage of powerful but scary figures. Play the successor if you want to struggle against your lineage as it threatens to draw you in. Do any of those sound appeal to your hearts? Oh, yeah. Um, I really love the icon. Yes, that's basically Aang. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But you can totally like, play that in different ways too, which oh, is really, really fun. So well. I just like when I like to look at the archetypes, I'm like, okay, so that one was Aang, that one was Zuko, that's Katara, yeah. that could be Korra probably. Um, so I like to kind of attribute how I can interpret them and then take that and go with it. I'm kind of leaning towards the hammer. Kind of okay. want to be. Yeah, I want to be the punchy punch. <laughs> I want to punch anything and everything that gets in my way. <laughs> Solve all of your problems with punching. So angry. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm the angry teen. <laughs> I'm gonna be the angry teen. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Nice. That's so perfect. Oh, you have so many anger issues, and you just you punch them out, and all you need is a good conversation and a hug. Honestly, yeah, <sighs> that's only he would probably break down and cry. But um, no fun of people, obviously. He doesn't he doesn't cry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Feelings, feelings. Your fragile no. masculinity can't handle that. Not yet. <laughs> Not until you grow. <laughs> Quick, put on more back spray. <laughs> 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 Um, All right, for those who are comfortable with what they've selected in our character keeper, um, there's a little drop down next to your playbook, um, and it should. Mm. I don't know. Sometimes it does stuff with that information. Sometimes it doesn't. Who knows? Oh, it did. It did the thing. Oh um, yeah, yeah, it does. I'll take. I'll take the green one if no one's taking that one. Does anyone mind if I take blue? Take Go for it. Yellow. I can take yellow. Perfect, Vanna. That puts you at red. No, I'm gonna be purple. Okay, I'll take the red one. <laughs> no, I'm just. <laughs> 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 be purple if you want just chaos just pure chaos <laughs> i love it i don't know why i put my whole name in there <laughs> need to know. i need your middle name and your mother's maiden name please need your social security, social security number. Yep. Um, <laughs> and your bank account for you don't mind yep please what, was what your did na- you pick connie your i picked i'm 
I'm trying to decide between the idealist and the successor. Okay. Ooh, I think what, what about you? Make such a good successor. I was thinking idealist. I'll take successor. No worries. And then you were talking too about being like our father's only legitimate child. I don't know if legitimate so much as like I'm thinking that my mom is like one of the consorts or one of the I don't know how this works of like the the fire lord uh mm -hmm. and like the fact that like you know and maybe it's like a not so you know well kept secret that I'm not actually the fire lord's kid um so I'm what supposed if? to uh, maybe I have a secret mission to actually kill my dad that I'm going <gasps> but then I learn about the power of friendship or whatever like from you guys <laughs> or not <laughs> what if end up just betraying you at the end I don't know <laughs> okay, it could no it, maybe pressure. your maybe your mom had like a youthful indiscretion, like, and then when she got older, became the concubine, like one of the various concubines. Maybe that could be it. What What do you mean by useful indiscretion? Oh, youthful. I thought, youthful. I thought you said useful indiscretion. I was like, oh, I used to be useful indiscretion. Go I on. <laughs> I, I like the idea of it being like you know they were legitimately in love um and maybe like my the, our dad even wanted like was like run away with me right like don't be with a fire lord he sucks and my mom was like no we're safe and secure here you know and my dad was like you're a coward and like left or whatever um oh my god our dad's know. so mean <laughs> i feel like he's yeah. very he's very much an idealist you know he i can see that. Power, oh. so i feel like his politics will always come first before his personal relationships which is also something we can talk about with our dad um uh-huh i like the I'm idea that we all sister. view him a different way like yes. we yes. really know him yes. we all have yeah. a very different i'm really like, one of that. us is like he's tall and angry and someone else is like no he's like short and um silly <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> i really like that I'm, I'm so excited for when B actually reveals our dad. <laughs> There's nothing like any of the things and we yes, can use. Yes, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I, he's like Lautus, so he's got that going and for him. That's the reveal. <laughs> that's, that's the reveals. Did. We already ruined the, the finale. Already, yeah, my bad. <laughs> You'll still find out. I really like the idea of like coming, maybe my character comes from like a very matriarchal society somewhere and he was just basically like, oh, you seem like a nice sperm donor. <laughs> He's coming through. Okay. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, that's basically it. I'm just oh, like, damn, okay. yeah. Yeah. Excuse so like, me. Do you have semen? <laughs> I'm in the market for some. He's, I, I like this one. He has good calves. All right. Oh, Excellent. my God. Flout, good sir. Please inseminate me. I, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> and and so like the men are just sort of we, we don't really have like it's a very matriarchal society yeah you seem like a good provider of good genetic information and my you i've got just never great paths as a result yeah and i've just never had the urge or like desire to like i've never felt the need for a father figure in my life because my world and society just doesn't have that kind of thing so i'm that. just i'm kind of just here because i'm like oh okay this could be interesting <laughs> like okay what's up so it's very much unlike connie's character who's very angry <laughs> and also drag's character but maybe he's very angry as well i'm just like ah oh, seems nice cool well, i don't know if my character is so much angry as like on a mission Fair. Uh, very, I'm very interested in playing characters that's very like like yeah laser focus kind of like peeled back analytical I think is yeah. probably how I'm going to play this character um yeah I I think we're I'm just part of a very old matriarchal line and we're just I think maybe we're also hippies like we're just hippies <laughs> that's so perfect yeah and it's like yeah whatever just go with the flow hippies <laughs> left and right well if this um well, I mean, as we kind of flesh out the characters, the next thing we're going to do is, you know, the best part about playing this game is your training. So one of your mm -hmm. training can be either one of the four elements, or if you're a non-bender with enough skill in the martial arts, um, you can be, oh, it's, got, it's called something else. Um, oh, weapons or technology. Yeah. Hmm. Does everyone, anyone have, uh, I definitely want to have at least one bending. I think it's like, I can choose like a fine style and a bending style, right? I want to be an earth yeah. bender. We're just going to do perfect. Done. Um, Firebender for sure. 
Yeah, okay. that makes sense. I'll, yep, just I'll pick be... your training for now. Okay. Yep. I'll I... be in water. Ooh. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd love to be an airbender because I think okay. that makes oh, a lot of sense. Yes. I love that we're all Woo! that we're all <laughs> his children. We make up the. Uh, I love it. I, I freaking love it. Love it. <laughs> it's so great. Maybe that was his goal. He was like, "I'm on a quest." Oh, <laughs> I just grown up. Maybe like maybe I have like my family is part of like a bunch of nuns, like just air nomad nuns. And we I just love live that. together, mm, and just yeah. like I just grew up that way, and it's great. That's really lovely. Well, because the next thing that we're going to do is talking about your background. So, you know, classic, we get to choose two backgrounds to describe your character's upbringing. Um, your background affects your social situations and tell us what kind of knowledge you and um, practice you can draw on when you use the move, rely on your skills and training. Um, so I want you to write down like the name of your character's home town or home land. Um, and you can choose like a location from the show or make one up. Um, but so when it comes to background, we have a couple of options to select from specifically. Um, you could have a military background, pretty self-explanatory. Um, a monastic background, <laughs> Michelle, that might be good for you. Yeah, it's good for me. <laughs> uh, you can be, have an outlaw background. Um, I, uh, make that applicable where you see fit. Um, a privileged background uh connie yeah <laughs> definitely, definitely or just a good old-fashioned urban background i think i'm gonna go with urban for one yeah oh one. also wilderness right. you can be a wilder oh, child oh yeah, yeah, yeah i'm i'm in the wilderness because we're just a nomad <laughs> love it okay where is okay so you choose two right so scroll down yeah, yeah, yeah just a wee bit okay so i'll take so urban two of them yep and um i'll say outlaw i think i'm like a i'm like a punk kid i like got i get into fights i'm i'm oh, <laughs> i don't know why my, so my i don't know why my brain went to this i'm like um i like most of my time i'm out on the streets playing with friends and stuff like that but i get into a lot of fights like i've got run it have run into gangs and stuff like that i'm not part of myself but like i cause mm -hmm. trouble no, oh, it's because you've never had any, uh, any, what's the word? Any structure in your life. Yeah. Oh, poor sweet child. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> B, question, what colors are dad's eyes? Ooh. Are you going to be the, the, the husky? Heterochromatic. Heterochromatic? Yeah. yeah. Jinx, you owe me a soda. Uh, <laughs> you owe me a soda. Pop. Why did you say the most American <laughs> word in an, a British accent? <laughs> no, I am so bad at accents. It's my oh, Achilles heel of performance. Um, uh, I think green with flecks of gold. Ooh. Ooh. So we're like a whole ass gem mine here. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also, B, if this is relevant to you for NPC stuff, I'm thinking that my other parent is also a dad. So I Perfect. had a few yeah. nice. two dads. It might be. We'll be doing a little bit of NPC stuff in a little bit. All right. So everybody's picked uh, two of their background areas. Yeah, we got. Oh, no. Are you stuck? What are you torn between? What defines we, we pick, you? We pick. Oh, we can pick up to two. We don't have to pick two. Preferably two. It just defines it. Like it makes it a little bit more specific. But if you just want, like, uh, privilege? That's fine. Okay. I pick mine. Awesome. Uh, and then moving on, demeanors. So every playbook has six demeanors. Um, if you've selected, yeah, it should fill it in for you. Um, so it's the ways that your character might behave in social situations uh, or when they're under pressure. Choose one or more or make up your own version um, if your vision of your character isn't covered there. Uh, so... To make sure I've got this right. I need like a list. Hold on. If I don't have like a list to select from, my whole world goes out of whack. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Every playbook has six demeanors. Do they though? I don't see any demeanors here. Well, time to open up the good old other document that I have open. So... Yeah, where is the demeanor section? Demeanor. It should be um, on under playbooks. Um, yeah. if you scroll all oh, the way no, down sorry. to the playbook. Oh uh, no, sorry. 
I'm in, sorry, no, I'm in the quick start PDF because I, I see the cell and it, there's nothing there. And I'm with B in the sense of like, but there's not a drop down. Yeah, if, you, if you scroll all the way down, like near the end, all the playbooks are there and each one has a demeanor up top, like right on the top of the playbook. Um, So like gotcha. the hammer has playful, quiet, excessive, blunt, loud, and determined. Does that make sense to you, Michelle? That makes sense. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep talking and saying where it's... How many do we choose? One, right? Or two? Uh, I feel like it said a couple. Let's go uh, back. I scrolled a whole bunch. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> um, choose one or more. One so or minimum more. of one. Okay. I would choose loud. Excessive <laughs> and loud. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. Oh my <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm very casual and oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> also my favorite. Nice. <laughs> very uh, good to me. I'm still not seeing these. Um, um Do you know what have, are you looking at the playbooks right now? Yeah. Um it, it starts at page. Well, mine is uh, on eleven. Oh, what, are um, you, what playbook did you pick again? Sorry, I picked the idealist. Oh, I yeah. see. It's at the top. It's at the, oh, yeah, yeah. It's the first thing. Okay, sorry, yeah. ignore me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't go looking for it too much because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the layout of like the actual character sheets in um, like the quick start that you get. Like, not only are they pretty, there's a lot of information on them. I get overwhelmed by words, um, but there's also art. And art soothes my soul when it takes away from all the words that I'm looking at. Yeah, the odds are really, really good. Mm -hmm. All right, so we all have some demeanors, Van. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Oops. Now oh, I lost the thread. Dang it. Perfect. All right, uh, history questions, it looks like, is the next thing. Um, I think everybody has their own unique history questions. I mm. need to determine that with... Yeah, you do. Ah, oh, heck, I love history questions. So this is like bonds and relationships um, in literally any and every game. Uh, so we'll round Robin it, starting like uh, from our character keeper. So green, I think, was Drac. Uh, go ahead and read out yeah. your first question, please. Let me find it real quick. Okay. Um, Cell 80 in the character keeper. If that helps. Oh, it's right on there. Okay. History, yeah. Um, oh, so what injustice has driven you to use your strength for good? <laughs> you just described yourself as like a street kid I but think you do I, some good yeah I think the reason why I'm in trouble with so many gangs is because I like I see them being shitty to other people or like rusting people up on the streets taking like the the rare valuables they have so I think um, just seeing seeing everything seeing where I at least the area I'm from be left to its own devices to the point where it's um just an unsafe place to be. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm the guy that I'm. I'm the kid that always comes back home with like a busted lip and a black eye. <laughs> after, and um, the parents like, what what happened? I was like, the cabbage guy was like was getting held up for the cabbages. I, I couldn't just stand there and do nothing. <laughs> kind of, like, to, <laughs> Gotta save those cabbages. Yeah. <laughs> you love Gotta that. help the guy with those cabbages. I love that so much uh blue who is blue again i am blue fabulous go ahead and read out your first question what tradition do you represent as its icon why can't you set down the role um i think that i'm the granddaughter of like the head of this air nomad nunnery <laughs> cloister traveling <laughs> cloister and i literally can't set it down because um i am one of the future i'm the next i am the next generation essentially um my mother will eventually take over the role and then i will take over this role so it is not something that i can escape by like because it's my bloodline okay i love that mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm just gonna write, you can't escape your bloodline. I like that though. That's like kind of, that deals with that personal sense of responsibility that you almost have to keep at all times. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it'll be, it's interesting too, because it's like, even though everyone in, in this particular community is so very chill and free, there's like a certain code of society, like what we do within this community that needs to, that defines who we are. Mm hmm. That's really lovely. Uh, Connie, you are next. Hello. I also have a name for my character. I've decided Ooh. all pronouns. Uh, their name is Yali, uh, which is also the Chinese term for pressure. Uh, so Ooh. I also have a little like image ref. If you want to scroll up and look at them, uh, very funny looks. They look um, badass. <laughs> Yeah, very like privilege, oh right? God, yes. Like a little bit of darkness. Um, so my first question is who is the current head of your lineage? How do you love and frustrate each other? Definitely my other dad, right? Not bar dad, but dad dad. Uh, and I think it's like several consorts down from the fire lord. So I'm never, I'm ne not gonna be the fire lord. I'm not next in line, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. I think my dad is very ambitious and is very like I don't want to say scheming and power hungry. Those are very negative ways of putting it. I say I would say ambitious and driven uh, is how okay. Gali looks at their dad. Um, they love and frustrate each other. Dad has high expectations, obviously, as a successor. Like, duh, huge pressure um, on Yali's shoulders. Has always been, you know, they're very, they love each other in terms of like, they know that their dad just wants them to have a very happy and successful future. And this is their way of giving it to their kid, right? Like, oh, like if you're, if, if I assure your place in the Fire Lord's hierarchy, no matter the atrocities our nation's committing, like that's what I care about, right? Because family comes first uh, for my Ooh. dad. Um, frustrate each other. I think Yali has never ever been given a choice for what their future could look like. Even this mission that they're on, they were sent on it by their dad. It's sort of like, this is like their way of proving themselves finally, like proving that they are worthy of taking up the mantle, which is to go on this mission, find their other dad and kill him. Uh, Cause he's acting as like, you know, whatever, insurgent against the fire lord yeah. um but yeah i think yali uh, never has never had friends was never really allowed to have friends because they were always training uh, as as a firebender i think they're very good at bending and the kind of technique i gave them is um they basically turn their hands like molten red and they slice almost like the very precise like metal bending that kuvira does uh both like yeah. like slices of like lo like fire coming out uh and like hand-to-hand -hand combat I, I think like close combat is where they excel that's yeah really hacking cool oh my god i live in fear <laughs> <laughs> as you should oh heck all right vanna first history question you got a nice uh a nice easy one what does that mean uh what tragedy oh. befell you at a young age <laughs> all, my, all my marbles fell so <laughs> never fully recovered from that um no i'm thinking i really liked uh the kyoshi book so i wanted to like base my character on uh where kyoshi grew up um where okay. she was like abandoned a kid as a kid which is yukoya in the book but i think it later becomes kyoshi's island so during this period i think it would be known as kyoshi's island um but that's like a really big like um shipping port it's like really um uh like the big export there is i think they're called elephant fish i think okay so okay. i think she has she's just like one of the many families there that like their whole deal is that they live on the island to uh to fish them and and export those those goods and then they just kind of like scrimp by um so either impoverished or you know very low um low in class um and I think it would like, since she didn't have, like, it was just her mom, um, they would just run the ship together. And her mom was very determined to like provide for her, even though she was like a single mother. And so it was like, even it was kind of like her mom's thing or like their thing that they would still go out even on days that none of the other fishers would leave port. Cause she was like, oh, that'll be the best day to go do it because no one else is fishing that day. Uh, and of course, if eventually that luck runs out and something happens and um, and her mother dies. And I think, um, or I don't know, she loses her mom. Maybe she's a mermaid now. Um, 
And then I think it says, who do you hold most responsible for the tragedy? I think they blame themselves. Um, like, you know, it was just the two of them on the boat. What, what could they have done to prevent it? They shouldn't have let their mom go out. They should have used their earthbending to save her, but the ocean floor was too far away and, you know, just, just survivor's guilt kind of thing. Um, who helped you through your grief? I think like the, the fishing community there is very, um, I don't know what the word, but, uh, uh, communal. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Communal. So it's just like, you know, everybody can helps pick each other up by the bootstraps when they need it. And, um, and you know, when they came back without their mom, like they, the whole community, the like fishing community came together and kind of helped raise them and made sure they could stay in their house and that they could keep doing work on everyone's boat to like earn enough money. Um, cause they couldn't take their own boat out by themselves. Um, what symbol heirloom or mark do you carry to remind you of what you lost? Um, I'm not sure about that. I think it's something of their mother's, but I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about that. Not sure yet. Okay. Hey, perfect. Back at the top. Oh, the Come boat. Back. It's the boat. You carry your boat with you? A like photo a of the boat? A painting oh, a of photo. the boat. <laughs> I was like, how big is this boat? <laughs> it's a little, like a, oh, a, a part of the boat. Like a plank. Yeah, the maybe you take like a yeah, yeah, maybe take like an oar. Oh. That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be very cool. That's just your weapon, just pull out an oar. Uh -huh. on this <laughs> That's very cool. I mean, maybe it is a piece of the masthead, actually, since I'm an earthbender. Maybe mm. I know very minimal metal bending. And so I took like a chunk of the masthead, and when I'm anxious, I like bend that. And keep that on my person. I like that's it. very cool. Perfect. All right, Drac, tell me a little bit more uh, about you. Yeah, um, I think the, the person who represents kind, the kind of positive strength and force you want to embody, I think could be. I think I actually live with my older sister. Like, there's like a. 10 15 year like age difference between us um not related to our um dad um, <laughs> um but uh i think i think like <laughs> our chaos dad yeah not related to our chaos dad uh i think my my mother like passed away like a, a few years ago um and now i think about it that do you nah. have any role models? Is there anybody in the community? Are there any like even gang leaders that like possess strength? Okay, no, so your sister. Yeah. She I kind think... of holds like that strength and, and holds everybody together and positivity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think she's more like while he's like a rough and tumble, gets into fights way, way too often. I think she's very much like a she's hard not to like. She's if if there was like a gang bullying someone, she would talk them down while I would have to like punch their like, lights out. Um, I think he he um, he he really respects and uh, like looks up to her for something like that. A strength that he Aww. doesn't quite understand or have. Um, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, we might as well run through. I really like the way Vanna did that. So I'm so sorry. I was not paying attention no, to good. the instructions. Obviously, <laughs> no, <laughs> I we're on a we're roll and it load. It's do not apologize. It was great. Um, yeah, so tell me about your next one, Drac. Um, who tried their best to teach you restraint, calm, and thoughtfulness? Can I double up and say my older sister as well? Because I feel like if he, yeah. every time he comes back like bloody, she's always like scolding him um, while attending to his wounds and telling him that there are better ways to deal with this kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And what fragile? Oh, no, fragile. They, they mentioned that on purpose. Okay. Fragile trinket or heirloom do you keep and protect? For um, fragile. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um i think it is the anything of your sisters yeah I hair think... tie bracelet necklace oh um... i want to go with hair tie yeah i think yeah. yeah i think it's hair tie yeah what does it look like um i think it's kind of a it, it's handmade so like it's not like anything ridiculously um high quality or anything but I think of like a hair tie she made for him um, the day, I don't want to 
Because, like, Van already has, like, a friend who's dead, and I don't want to... She doesn't have to disappear. She can just, like, you just laugh. She can and, be like... a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she just disappeared. Okay, so, okay. I, th <laughs> I think um, it's, like, the... So, I think my, my, my character's mother died, and, like, my character has long hair. Like, he has hair that like, fucking goes everywhere. And I think um, he was, like, just sobbing and crying, and his sister would, like, come up and just, like, play with his hair just to like calm him down and um and that day he, she did that to help like just comfort him a bit and gave him his hair uh her hair tie to like tie his hair off his face and kind of kept that as a um as a thing that uses to try and keep calm whenever he feels himself ticking over um awesome so yeah like and it's kind of just like a blue blue and um aqua green kind of um band with a handmade like snowflake hanging off of it and he uses that to tie his hair hair back oh i love it it does sound super ugly but that's that's yeah okay. no, it's that's very ugly it really nice it's very i if i honestly i think whenever i think there's been a few times where he's gone into a fight because someone's like that's a really fucking ugly hair tan it's like <laughs> gonna be like that's a really ugly hair tie um, like as soon as we meet. <laughs> yes! I, in, in in that case, I think the reason why we got the, the Fire Nation got a jump on us because when Connie's character said that, he was about to, Yeah, they, they were going to about to fight and then the Fire Nation, like the Fire Guards jumped us. A hundred percent. Love it. Oh, perfect. All right, Michelle, tell me a little bit about your oh. chief and mentor. Who were they? Oh, um, I did also like Connie come up with a name. So my name is De Chen, um, which I yeah. believe is a Tibetan name, which is really awesome. And um, their particular bending style is just interpretive dance. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. It's just very like loose and free and it's very Stevie Nicks. <laughs> it's just yes, it is. sort of shawl, just like whirling around. Get you gently. a bunch of beads. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my chief mentor was definitely my uh, my grandmother, who was the head of our order. And she definitely taught us, like, this is why we do what we do. Like, the world is, is, is like, a scary place. It's our, it's our role to go around and be peaceful and to be nonviolent and to make sure that people understand that there's no, always another way. Um, but, you know, this way is this way and this is how we bend and this is how we do things. Um, Perfect. So, yeah, that definitely the matriarch. Um, my mother, I think, is like the most playful of the the folks like uh, of the of the cloister of the community that i'm part of and i think that's one of the reasons why she was attracted to our lothario of a dad <laughs> was because he was you know also kind of playful and so she's a little bit more playful as well even though um you know she still keeps to the um the traditions of our community and yeah like we just finding ways of like encouraging me to do my dances even though it's not like the proper way um to airbend like according to our community um so i can Love still do that. my stevie nicks twirling um mm -hmm. and i think the token of my burden tradition i always carry is a set of prayer beads um i think because we're a bunch of traveling nuns uh we go to this one giant tree um in this particular forest where we make a pilgrimage like it's one of our main stops and every person in this order has a set of prayer beads that are made from the nuts of this tree they're like polished and carved and strung together with a little tassel um it's very similar to like buddhist prayer beads essentially so okay. yeah yeah that, that is just something that i always carry so it's like if you ever see someone with the same prayer beads like you know they're from the same order mm -hmm. oh that's really lovely I love the inclusion of the trinkets or heirlooms for all these characters because it just kind of creates a token or something that really defines the character that also ties back to some of their history. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dive deep. Uh, Connie, let me scroll do it. to your name again. Yeah, Lee, tell me about you some more. I came up with a different idea because I was reading through my history questions and I was like, okay, this is a slight tweak. I think on my character's motivations. So my second one is what close member of your lineage wants to revolutionize it. I think my aunt. 
So my order dad, there's chaos dad and order dad, right? So my order <laughs> dad's sister. And I think she's actually the person that I'm like closest to because she's, she's the one who was always like kind of nice to me. Like when I was like doing really hard training that my dad would put me through very like Shanti, I think, um, or Shanti rather, uh, like she would be the one to like sneak me like snacks, you know, like secretly Aww. and like was nice to me. And I think she was always like side-eyeing my order dad being like, you gotta be like, like, more gentle with this kid because like they're gonna grow up real traumatized i know you have good <laughs> intentions but the way you're treating yali is not good so i think like she wants to revolutionize it in the sense of like she thinks what the fire lord is doing is wrong and she might be a secret like person like within the palace working against the fire lord she might even like be trying to keep an eye out for chaos dad and ensure that he's okay so i actually want to change my motivation for why i'm setting out why i responded to the letter in the first place i yeah. think i'm doing it against my order dad's without order dad knowing and i think my fun aunt helped me like she was like hey. find your own path find your own destiny go seek out fun like chaos dad and i was like okay and it's like the first choice I actually made for myself, but I'm kind of like yes. in an identity crisis mode right now with like my friends. Yeah, here. I love that. So then yeah. you that everything's new. Everybody is scary. There's yes. no order. <laughs> exactly. So it's my aunt. What do I carry that reminds me of the place most associated with my lineage? It's definitely a, a ring forged from titanium. I think it's a signet ring. And the signet, like the family motto, I think that's carved on top of it, uh, probably says something like forged in fire, cast in iron or something uh, or, or something that says like like always hotter than heat which like, like some sort of like motto that just means like you always have to be the hardest thing in the room you like always have to be yeah. the most dangerous thing in the room in, order to uh, advance in the world okay right okay. and also titanium is a is a really durable metal that doesn't melt uh under extreme heat so it, i can yeah. wear it when i'm doing my burning hands thing um and what part of your lineage's identity is important and valuable to you as a person? I think it's, it's the fact that we, mm -hmm. yes, I think the one thing, cause I, my character's processing a lot of the resentment that they don't even realize they hold against their order dad. But I think mm -hmm. the one thing that like order dad has taught them is just like determination to always keep going because I think maybe order dad came from nothing like was maybe like a peasant right and like scrounged their way up into the palace like kind of a bootstrap story and like okay. that part of the story I'm like very much also drawing on my own experiences as like you know 1.5 gen Chinese American kid of an immigrant you know thing where it's like yeah like my relationship with my mom is fraught right but I still respect you know the whole like look at what I sacrifice to give yeah. you you know, and like dealing with a lot of the diaspora guilt there. Uh, and I think like playing with that a little bit for like Yali as a character. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Y'all are like fully fledged characters. Oh, we did it. This is beautiful. We got a little bit more to do. I, I wasn't kidding when I said this character creation has a lot. It's chunky. We haven't even got to good. that. Good. It's balance. good. Or I, I love how different we are. Yeah. <laughs> like, our dad no, made, no. helped make so many different people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's got to be so something we haven't, there's got to be something we have in common there, like some weird, random, small thing we have in common. One, like we have one tick, like just one, like, no. Like a similar like birthmark that. in the shape of a flute. Maybe we all just start tapping our feet whenever music starts. <laughs> it's just like something we unconscious just, that we, we all do. We just love music. We all can't roll our R's. And we're all really impressed <laughs> about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to run through uh, stats. Um, everybody yeah. knows what a stat is. Um, we have creativity, focus, harmony, and passion. Creativity is exactly what you think it is. Measures your ability to think quickly and unconventionally. Um, focus means your, or measures your character's ability to perform difficult or precise tasks under pressure. Harmony measures your character's social sensitivity, care, and empathy, because that is important. Let's not forget, this is Avatar. Y'all, having conversations with your friends, debriefing after a tense moment, these are all parts that really, really make this series, and they included that so hecking well in this game. Um, and then finally, passion, which measures the intensity of your character's emotions and drive and how good they are at listening to their feelings and turning them into decisive action. Because um, I never read things to completion i'm realizing all of these have little blurbs like creativity think ang um focus think azula harmony think uncle iroh 
passion think zuko um oh, yeah zuko yeah right <laughs> Um, so every playbook starts out with two stats at plus one, um, one at zero, and one at minus one. Okay, let me find. And we can add plus one to one of those stats, right? Yes. Add plus one to yes. one of those stats. Point here. I, okay. Again, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't just going to finish reading <laughs> at all, so thank you. <laughs> you see why I struggle with characterization? <laughs> it involves reading full sentences. Hmm. Not about that. Um, while y'all are clicking through, I'm just going to read a little bit more about um, what I find really fun. Because um, in this game, of course, you know, you're you're going to fight the Fire Nation. You're going to fight enemies. You're going to fight, um, I don't know, cow bears. Who knows what you're going to encounter? There's going to be emotionally draining situations. But you're not going to lose hit points. You're, you don't have mana. You don't have any of that. Instead, you will be tracking fatigue. There are five boxes, so when your character gets exhausted, injured, emotionally or physically, you are going to mark off a fatigue box. Um, and then we will resolve kind of what happens as the scene handles it. Um, everybody has conditions. Um, again, because this game does deal with a lot of emotional states. Um, Y'all are like your kids! Your teens, you have so many feelings, so many emotions, and you don't know what to do with them. And either you punch things, scream at them, are eternally repressed. There's just, there's a lot going on. Um, so there are going to be stressful situations that require you to mark a condition to indicate how you're feeling right now. Um, as with most games, we don't start out with any conditions because hopefully you're feeling pretty good. How is stat clicking for everybody? Good. Yeah, so we we good. add one we add initial one to any right. Yes. Is that how that works? Okay, great, awesome. I did it correctly. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Ugh, I'm clicking buttons again. Damn it. There we go. Stats. Stats. I obviously put my plus one into passion, so I have a plus two, so I can punch things extra good. <laughs> Uh, you're good at one thing and it's punching. <laughs> Perfection. All right. Well, Vanna, I think you're still clicking away. Yeah, I don't see it. I, I'm on oh, I'm like, it. oh. We don't, um, what don't you see? Never mind. I keep looking oh. for things at the bottom of things and they're not <laughs> there. They're at the top well, of things. Yes. No, we moved to the top. I'm My so sorry. <laughs> I didn't indicate that at all. That's, that's, yeah. We I'm should like, team up with this a bit better. My I bad. I was like going through the other tabs. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm gonna be stuck somewhere. somewhere. Oh no. Can I be like really tall and thin? I like this idea of being like this really tall, like, please. Yeah. Chill stork person. <laughs> yes, perfect. Stork vibes. I love it. Just chill stork vibes. <laughs> Mm -mm. I think it'll be like a pretty actually I might go short. I think it's a short short king. Yeah. 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 Live for it. We meet up and we're just, I'm just like we're related. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um so what we're going to move on to next is balance. Um, so on your character sheets, just a little bit under stats. Um, there is, well, it just says balance, center, and zero. But right underneath it, based on your character sheets, everybody has a different balance that you're kind of trying to balance. Um, so, Drac, you are dealing with your role as something specific and your freedom, trying to balance the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these are clickable. No, those are just numbers we're clicking. That's set up weird. Um, there's got to be more information somewhere. Because uh, I knew I do know effectively we are trying to keep that balanced center as much as possible. Yeah. But as your conditions are implicated, you're going to start feeling one way or another. Okay. 
So do I start off at zero or? You do. Okay. I just feel like I'm missing like something very, oh, very important so, about this. So we start off balanced and if something happens, I'm on page 12 of the uh, quick start PDF. Yeah. Um, so your moment, so we all have a, uh, we have principal scores and um, basically like if we start, okay, let's see. Uh, your balance always provides a pair of numbers, one for each of your principles. These two numbers are your principal scores, which is your principles. Your principal scores are always directly opposite each other, meaning if your balance puts one principal negative plus one, the other is negative two. Um, so it gives the bold as a particular example. Yeah, I don't know if I just keep reading, like if that will make more sense to folks. Like, um, so your balance determines how your character feels about one of the central conflicts of their identity, but it's also useful for calling upon strength when you act in accordance to your principles. Um, oh, between, so bold is between loyalty and confidence. Do I okay. Have you do. So yours are role and freedom, but I'm having a hard time with the word role. Like, is it your role in your? I don't know. I oh, my, mine is role and freedom. Um, and that makes sense. Oh, that does make sense. Character. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No I had my thing moved. Okay. That makes so much more sense. I'm like, I don't understand that, Drac. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, where Drac, yours is care that? and force. What page is that? Um, uh, so we're we're back on the um, so we're back on the uh the, the spreadsheet. If we go to oh, okay, uh, cell twenty seven. Cell cell twenty seven. Oh, care and force. Okay, I'm okay. I see. So like, how delicate are you <laughs> versus how much you just smashed? Oh, um, yeah, not very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it says that we can choose our shift our balance once if we like. So, uh, you don't have to. It seems like. Um, I'm shifting okay. mine because I think that makes sense. I love it. Let's read okay. a little bit more about balance. Um, so each principle of balance affects your character's whole worldview. Manifesting is a part of philosophy and a part of feeling. When they appear in your character sheet, that means they're both important to your character and intention um, with another important principle placing your character at a state of inner conflict. Over the course of the story, your character's thoughts and experiences push and pull them towards one idea or another. Um, okay, so because my brain, I often need proper examples to understand situation because I don't remember this super well, but I know it's important. So we're going to learn together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's my cat coming to scream at me. She believes in me. She really does. Yeah. She is a supporter of everything I do. Thank you, Princess Tingle. Um, this is Tingle. Princess Tingle, it's Lord beautiful. of the Low, first of her name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's got a whole title. Um, so there's balance moves. Um, we have resist, resist shifting your balance. Um, okay, so if an NPC tries to tip your balance and you go along with it, you can just shift the way they want to. So I'm just trying to reapply this situation to our characters to kind of get an understanding. So an NPC comes up to you. Um, Michelle, did you pick a character name? Dechen? Yeah, Dechen. Dechen. Um, a character uh, NPC comes up to you and they're like, um, I want you to oh, light fire to this house. And you're like, no, I'm pretty sure I was taught that that's bad. Um, but if you view that arsony is a sense of freedom, uh, we'll take a shift in that direction. And that's going to kind of guide your worldview that, you know what, chaos is good, but there's going to be consequences if you know that you are infringing upon your beliefs that you grew up with your whole entire life. Mm -hmm. um, there are moves for losing your balance. Um, Y'all can call each other out. There is a move called call someone out. And that's like, you're not doing what you should be doing. Calling you out for this. Um, and you can resist it or you can talk it out. Um, so we're going to kind of figure out how the balance works as we play, because that is the best way for me to learn. Does anybody have yeah. any questions about this part? I'll be honest, still really confused about the balancing. I don't know how to fill in this, um, sheet oh. in, this in this case. 
Um, so uh, basically, if you see the drop down um, yeah. tab next to center, so yeah. the number on the left uh, refers to like your inclination towards um, the value that you have on your left, whereas the one on the right is the one on the right. For for example, like I've chosen plus one, minus one. So yeah. plus one um, means that right now my character is much more aligns towards like being traditional like fulfilling my role and okay. is a little disinclined to go for freedom because that's kind of how i am whereas like okay. uh connie i see you chose something too yes i did um are we talking specifically about our special features that we get to ch check off oh uh, no or oh, sorry this talking about like the running. just the just the center of the balance oh sure yes versus, um yeah. Center is always zero. We start with center at zero because our center only shifts when uh, our balance track goes to the end and then has to shift again. And then we just we, something yeah, happens, so a move happens, okay. and then we shift our center after. I think, um, if yeah, I recall correctly yeah, from my that that time, right. yeah, gotcha. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that I decided to put okay. Okay. tradition at negative one, progress at one, because I already took a step to out out of my dad's shadow. So I decided mm -hmm. that yeah. made narrative sense. Okay. Okay. That makes Things sense. are clicking now. Yeah. I understand that now. So sent is like, what is your new neutral at this point? Yes, yes. your true neutral. Okay. We must find our neutral. Okay. That, that explains <laughs> it. I get it now. Uh, so yeah, I sense is still zero, but I'm take a minus one in care and a plus one in force because force it has never not worked so far. Yes, <laughs> <the> force. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and Vanna. Um, yeah, I took your choices. I took a uh, one in forgiveness and a negative one in action, just because, you know, I guess I could be mad at my dad, you know, that he wasn't around at all. But I'm choosing forgiveness as I go into the situation. So, Aww, that's really lovely. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll yeah, see what happens. Lost. For see now. How long <laughs> <laughs> all right now we're going to move on to moves and features um as anybody familiar with playbooks what i love most about them is you get moves everybody gets some moves um how that works i don't really remember so we're also going to figure this out together <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. so we are looking down towards your featured featured moves um ugh, this is one having like the legit playbook helps okay hold up honey why you so... got so many what was that <laughs> why do you have so many uh it's just it's because it's because you like, you're better I, than I, us i min max my character i min max my <laughs> character it happened you're better than us <laughs> Okay, it looks like y'all only get to pick two. So well, Connie go picked ahead. ten. So read through them and delete the ones you don't want. <laughs> are you are you regretting not taking successor? Are you regretting taking idealist? Look at all my cool moves, Vanna. <laughs> Wait, really? You get ten? <laughs> <laughs> I got to raid my lineage's resources and ah. pay homage. What that are you great. talking about? Well, I can't. Oh, so I can't, we can't actually um, edit the feature choices, right? Mm -mm. Are we? Oops, it gave me data false. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think you can. I think they, I think it pulls it's it from automatic. the playbook. Automatic. Yeah. yeah, the keeper does. Okay. Um, I was just concerned that Connie did have 10 moves and that felt not real. No, the, 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 <laughs> so I OP, do Connie. just have access to those things, actually. Each of those sections is dependent on the playbook that you use and successor. Connie. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> <laughs> that okay that doesn't feel fair because i'm just playing rules as written i've done nothing yeah wrong. you're doing great mm -hmm. connie i think <laughs> you're doing amazing Never breaking change. rule of cool though <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay no you are 100 percent right though i did uh resolve that so in the character keeper on the bottom um there is playbook moves if you kind of uh tab on through mm. um so out of these you get to pick two okay yeah um so we don't have a lot of just like you reading quietly uh, i'm just gonna read out some of the default moves that your characters get 
So let's talk about this character, Drac. A featured move means you get to take minus one ongoing to plead with, trick, or comfort or support your adversary. Yeah, I have to pick an adversary is one of the things I need to do as a That's as a so <gasps> Yes. <laughs> <I'm just> saying... <laughs> Ugh, she was drooling. I'm not gonna pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> no. She, when she gets really happy and excited, she drools. And it's it sounds cute, except when you have to hold her, it's disgusting. I oh I really know what means I'm gonna pick. Um, okay. Fueled with anger or fueled by anger. And mm. um uh, You should be able to copy paste that back over to your main sheet. Yeah. And may uh, okay, I can't decide between um I can't decide between stand and fight or wars can't hold me. Ooh, tell me about them. Um so wards can't hold me. When you rely on your skills and training to dangerously smash your way through walls or other obstacles, roll with passion instead of focus. So I basically can cool cool aid man things. Um, yes. Oh or, yeah. <laughs> or stand and fight. Uh, when you provoke an NPC opponent into attacking you, roll with passion. On a hit, they're they're coming at you specifically. On a 10 yeah. plus, you're ready for them. Carry a condition or become prepared. On a miss, they take advantage of your provocation to strike a blow where at least expect. After I think stand and fight makes sense now that I think about it. Yeah, fueled by anger and stand and fight. I definitely, yeah, especially since my whole thing is like get in between yeah. um, folks whenever I see some kind of injustice. I think getting them to focus on me makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. That's perfect. That feels right. I like it. Oh my god, Michelle, did I read that right? Yep, yep. I get to get a fan. I have a friend. Oh my I get god. to bring a friend. <gasps> yes! Yep, yep. It's everything I've ever wanted in life. <laughs> <laughs> I I just don't know which one to choose. Like there's a flying bison. Um this walrus yak sounds interesting. Can you read all of these out loud, please? Because all of these options are amazing and I need everybody to understand these animal friends. So I do it like an AS okay, I'm gonna do an ASMR style. <laughs> I can choose a flying bison, a polar bear dog, an eel hound, oh God, this is... a cat gator, an elephant mandrel, a gemsbach bull, a shear shoe, a Komodo rhino, a saber tooth moose lion flying boar a walrus yak right or a flying fish hippopotamus what is going on <laughs> i oh can choose God. any of these i feel like i need to, I like I need <laughs> to, get to have one of these hey we get a flying mount at level one this is <laughs> <Yes>! insane <laughs> wait so so okay i want either the walrus yak or the flying bison or the flying fish hippopotamus i feel like the can bison I? maybe makes sense well, I mean, we've seen a flying bison. Do you want to do a flying boar? Yeah. And oh boar. my god, yes. Oh, yeah. <gasps> the little piggy. Oh, I have to so fly cute. when pigs fly. How are y'all formatting these text box? Mine is not. Do doing you need help, Van? I was noticing you struggling. <laughs> I, I, I have never seen a spreadsheet in my life. <laughs> wait, let me help you. Let me help you. Van, wait, wait no. you need to help me name chat. Help me name my flying pig. <laughs> We need a name for that flying pig. Give me a name for my flying pig. How'd you do that, Connie? Uh, it, it's for if you when you copy and paste it, it's formatted weird. You have to delete some paragraph breaks that it just oh, automatically okay. populates in. Got oh. it. Control I thought you were doing something. In. Sometimes works. Control. Oh my god, your cat! What a baby! <laughs> <laughs> she oh says big god. as a raccoon. Oh um. my god! Is she demanding <laughs> snuggles right now? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. I mean, if, I, oh. if we were talking ASMR, <gasps> I can probably get her to. <gasps> oh. Good oh. baby. Good lord. That's a good baby. Oh. She's so very, good. she's very happy right now. She's a lot of, like, a lot of cat. Like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot. Ooh, someone said razor wing. <laughs> razor <laughs> razor wing. Seems really Something intense for really my character. Intense. No, but I love the juxtaposition of you being like oh, a very wait. willowy hippie, and then all of a sudden you're like razor wing. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, like Starfire. Like uh, my people are oh my peace and harmony, and this is my flying boar, razor wing. <laughs> razor wing's like I've killed ten men. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. Razor wing is now the name my flying boar. Love it. I imagine my flying boar looks like the boar god from like Princess Mononoke. <laughs> <gasps> oh, this is so yes. intense. I'm oh just like, God. hi everyone. And it's like, <laughs> I'm, I love that image. That's actually really, really dope. beautiful. That is Iconic. So good. Never been done before. <laughs> not afraid to reference or not reference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, Michelle, you have that one move. We can. Uh, yeah, I'm trying, another to one? Um, yeah, I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide between doing? meditation use my momentum or otter penguins unagi and hot springs i feel like what the fuck either... that okay i'm gonna use the otter penguins unagi and hot springs because that just sounds real good what tell me about that that's what amazing that well i'll show you good friends as soon as i paste it into this thing give me a hot second so basically i'm like a giant tourist <laughs> makes sense um okay so what does when, that mean, though? Um, when I visit a new inhabited location I've learned about in the past, I roll with harmony. On a 7 to 9, I ask the first thing. And on a 10 plus, I ask can, uh, I ask one of these questions. On a 10 plus, I ask two. And um, me and my friends each clear all our fatigue when we interact with these answers. So it's <gasps> great, Incredible. like, resetting. But it's also just like we're, we're like – it's like I – maybe we get in my travels with my cloister – you know, I've visited all these places. And so we go to these places. I'm like, yeah, I know this place. They have really good dumplings over there. Let's go get these baller dumplings. <laughs> yeah. And we just clear That's all awesome. our fatigue. That's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that is so perfect. Y'all have such like fun moves. And mine are like <laughs> when you say, I'm when you release a, a 10 minute YouTube apology video, <laughs> this happens. <laughs> Life of regret. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm. This video is not going to be monetized because I just want it to be genuine. Yeah, comments um, off, comments <laughs> off. No, we start no crying. Bad guys. We start crying. <laughs> I'm sorry that you feel that way. I'm sorry that you got hurt. Mm -hmm. I made those comments when I was a kid, when I was a 25 year old kid, and <laughs> I've grown. I, you know, I've really I'm 26 grown. 26 now. <laughs> I just can't tell. I just really want to show you to prove that I can learn. <laughs> Yeah. It's my character to a T. That's good. That's good. Are we mad? <laughs> Are, Are we, we angry yeah. people? <laughs> Never. I am so excited about my moves, actually. Like, I those are so get good. a flying Borg. I didn't know. Named that. Razor Wing? Is that the conclusion? Razor Maybe. Wing. <laughs> Unless there's a better, more intense name that chat has suggested. Uh, Razor Wing's amazing. Razor yeah. Wing is great, though. How about Razor Wing Blood Guzzler? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know why you crack me up. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's boil their brains. Blood Guzzler. Blood Guzzler. My pig's oh, name Blood Guzzler. Yeah. Well, joke's on you, Connie. That's my only goal in life is to make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a bad job. I'm doing a bad job? No, no, no. Oh, oh wait. No. You said I made you laugh. You're the worst. <laughs> you're, you're the fire and warmth of my heart, man. I've really got to reassess my process <laughs> here. You're doing great. All right, Connie, let me or let us know what kind of moves you selected. Um, I selected a life of regret uh, instead of <laughs> yip yip or unagi. Uh, when I comfort or support an NPC by apologizing and honestly promising to make amends for the harm they've suffered, I roll with focus instead of harmony because I have a minus one harmony. If they choose not to open up to you. I don't take a plus one forward against them. If they do choose to open up to me, then I get to take a plus one ongoing to attempt to take action to make amends. Aw. That's yes. really it's a YouTube apology yeah. move, isn't it's it? It's literally yeah. the influencer <laughs> apology move. Uh, and then yes, Black yeah. Koala Sheep. <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting one. When you behave in a way that shocks and unsettles people from one of your backgrounds, roll with creativity to intimidate them or push your luck instead of passion. Um, which is interesting because my backgrounds are privileged and urban. So I guess if I if I unsettle rich people or like people from New York, yeah. I get a bad <laughs> You, no, no, no. More specifically, if you if you basically um, unsettle anyone from like Manhattan, yeah, <laughs> millionaires were on Manhattan. On Fifth I get Avenue. a plus one forward against P Manhattan Heights. <laughs> so you get a plus one against all of Manhattan. Yes. Oh, that's powerful. 
that i mean it's a pretty okay. sizable population funny <laughs> <laughs> like i said i'm OP. <laughs> all right and tell me oh yeah that's your black sheep koala okay perfect um vanna i see you pasting clicking and pasting i'm trying so hard i'm 31 i i'm too old for this try control shift paste like control shift d it's it's too late i'm doing the connie method okay <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, it's coin, method. Bit, the mm-hmm. marie kondo method but <laughs> method. <laughs> this is a spark joy <laughs> <laughs> this is a spark joy how is this one have 20 spaces and then it spells on an mt what's an mt you- ma'am <laughs> google f- google sheet ma'am okay i don't know you what's going help on pacing it in. yeah go. i need a, an right. assistance oh there you go on a mountain they notice on a mountain <laughs> mist it's probably mist right yeah yeah why is it say yeah. mount <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. um so i i'm really i definitely am liking the whatever i can move for me when you spend time talking to the locals about their problems roll with harmony on a hit you hear about the most significant and serious problem at hand the gm will tell you who it affects and what is the cause on 10 plus you can ask a follow-up question about the problem or cause you take a plus one ongoing when you act on the answer on a miss, you end up creating a whole new problem <laughs> with your questions and ideas. Um, yeah, I think that fits with my character, just like, you know, being raised kind of communally that any anytime they're kind of thrust into a community, they're comfortable sort of melding in and 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 connecting with other people. Um, Perfect. I'm not super 100% sold on this one, but I think this is the other one I'm going to take. Um, it doesn't belong to you when you secretly pocket something owned by someone undeserving. <laughs> so I'm thinking this is a steal from the rich scenario. <laughs> uh-huh. Since I grew up impoverished, um, roll with harmony on a hit. You swipe something from them. My choice without them noticing you took it on a seven to nine. The thing you took isn't exactly what you thought it was. The GM will tell you how on a miss you grab the goods, but they notice and pursue as soon as you exit the scene. Perfect. Okay, awesome. We have characters. Um, The only thing that is left for us um, on our next session is we are going to finally do the bonds and connections that build us, that holds you all together. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, we, I think we forgot the featured choices. Oh, I think we did. Mm -hmm. What? The what? The who now? There's so much more to this (laughs) heckin' game. I think those are auto-filled too. You get to choose. So oh, each playbook yeah. has their own special choices, their own little gimmick. So the successor's gimmick are resources and domains uh, and like the icons gimmick. I don't want to say gimmick. Sub feature choices are oh, responsibilities, yeah. prohibitions, yeah. etc. Yeah. Where do we put that? Um, right below on row 42 of our spreadsheet, there's future notes and it asks uh, our responsibilities and oh, it, it asks for the the things that we've chosen oh i was gonna say mine doesn't say that <laughs> my bad i keep reading my stuff and i realize oh right it's not everyone's yeah so vanna yours is what is your code and you can choose from above um you don't have to read too too much into it right now because we will cover the bulk of future choices and the rest of our connections together next week yeah. um okay. but for now you are mostly human beings with powers, y'all Nothing. share the same dad. He has disappeared <laughs> and started the greatest mystery of your lives. So thank you everybody for joining us. This has been absolutely amazing. I am very excited to finish off with this. Like I said, character creation is, it's not complicated. It's not clunky. Yeah. It's not crunchy. That's what I was looking for, but it's a lot. And for what it's worth, it's a lot that I enjoy. Like I've had so much just happiness hearing y'all come up with these outrageous ideas. <laughs> but for the most part, they've been good ideas. Um, and just <laughs> putting that all together to make the story that we're going to tell. Our dad, the brain boiler. <laughs> brain boiler. Kenny G, the brain boiler. <laughs> Former brain boiler. Former brain boiler. Yeah. Brain Former. boiler. Yes. That's important. Former brain Do boiler. we know that we've given that he's given up his brain boiling ways? I don't, I don't think, think probably, we knew. Right? And we probably didn't even know, but I, I knew. Assume. That's why my the brain boiling is probably a secret. I don't oh. think we know. One of you might have. That. 
Yeah, Vanna's character. Depends on what your mother is. Let's go. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like Connie's character maybe would know, but like maybe, yeah. I was running for one night stand, so <laughs> not even. He was like, "Watch this." Boiled <laughs> a fish <laughs> man's brain in front of her. So hot. <laughs> so oh my hot. Kiss me. <laughs> uh, so for folks who, for some wild reason, really do want to catch up on all of our shows, I promise the cast are very different than just what we have here. Uh, or podcast, remember to like or comment and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when new content is posted to YouTube. Join the Exploration Society on Coffee and join our Discord where we talk shop all day long brain boiling included uh, i've been your host b zelda you can find me on twitter as at b underscore zelda podcaster streamer writer and community manager for adventures league connie hi everyone i'm connie thanks so much for having me here v uh it's i'm really excited to be jammed by you this will be my first time being jammed by you and i'm so so yeah. excited about that uh when i'm not playing boy brain boilers brat Yavi, uh, I am the GM and executive producer for Trans A Planar RPG, which is an all trans POC led 100% homebrew D&D show uh, set in an original non-colonial anti-orientalist world streaming Saturdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. That's 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern and I think 6 p.m. Mountain because I'm very good at doing time zones in my brain. Uh, so follow us on TikTok. Uh, not TikTok, not yet. Uh, Twitch and Twitter at Transplanter RPG. But follow me on TikTok and Twitter at by Connie Chong. B Y C O N N I E C H A N G. I'm gonna pass along introductions to Drac. Yeah, hi, I'm Drac with Draconics. You can find me on Twitter at Draconics. It's D R A K O N I Q U E S. Um, I stream all over the place, so that's just finding me on Twitter is the best place to figure out what I'm doing at any given moment. Um, you could follow um, Friends Roll Dice, Friends Roll Dice on Twitter, and Friends Who Roll Dice on Twitch because we do a bunch of TTRPGs. There'll be a few more shows coming up in the pipeline that I'm very excited about, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna throw it over to Michelle. I'm gonna switch things up. Wow, unpredictable. <laughs> yeah. This is this is a chaotic crew. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be playing with y'all. This is going to be epic and amazing, and I'm very stoked. Um, so you can find me on Twitter, mostly yelling at the world about TTRPGs, my cats, baking, and Magic the Gathering, <laughs> um, at Kiln Fiend Potter, also about ceramics, because I do that um, for a job, which is fun. Um, and yeah, you'd find me there when I'm not uh, being my boiling brain, uh, bubbly a boiling brain daddy's bubbly babe i think that's probably <laughs> maybe the best way to that. wow <laughs> nailed it awesome and i'm gonna <laughs> shoot it over to vanna <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Vanna. I stream full time on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vanna. That is V A N A. You can find me on most socials at Havana Rama, H A V A N A R A M A. And um, I've been playing a lot of Breath of the Wild recently. So tune in for that. Um, I'm cooking up a Strixhaven show, and that is still very early stages. And uh, we've got a pull up a sheet episode that's not scheduled yet, but Connie will be in it. And Drac. Ooh, nice. um, we're going to be playing Hometown Holiday, which is an indie tabletop RPG that basically you play your own um, lifetime original holiday romance movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> it's gonna be super fun. love that. So it's going to uh. be happening uh, probably towards the end of this month, but we have session zero this week. So yeah. tune in for that. Stay tuned on my Twitter. I'll let you know. Fabulous. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you for watching us try to create some characters for Avatar uh, Avatar Legends, the RPG. Thank you and have a fantastic time zone. Mm-hmm.